Hey, that was nice. good. That Thank was good. you. I love that. Oh, that was a good a dean one. dean with full concentration. Exactly. That's what it's all about, I think. Just making work together. Yeah. It really wasn't work, though, when you enjoy it. Daniel? Daniel Thanks for Romain. sitting, and now yeah. we're going to walk, we're going to play, we're going to talk, we're going to make meaning. Let's do it. All right, Daniel, uh, yeah. you are an institute professor here at Arizona State University, the Herberger Institute, working in the School of Music, but also working in other schools here. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about sort of what your experience has been and what your vision is for music and for performance. Um, but I want to start a little bit with your own personal background, because I've heard you talk um, about growing up, what were your early experiences with music um, there in Florida? Yeah, I think, I think because I had a great mother, have a great mother, and because I had a great music teacher, and by great I mean they were both so gracious, it was instilled in me that to be a composer or a violinist or a musician or an artist, it meant that you were in service to someone or something else. The New York Times has, has reviewed your work several mm. times over the last 18 months, declaring it to be powerful, perhaps one of the most important composers writing in our moment right now. Um, how, did, how did you arrive at, at this type of musician now? <laughs> uh, right. Radically uh, collaborative, pushing boundaries. Um, how does that sort of square with your training? I think training keeps coming to mind, this notion of, I feel that I was so fortunate um, you know, to end up in Broward County as a five-year-old boy, because in 1975, there were orchestra, orchestral programs and music programs in all of the elementary schools. And you know, there was that community, we talked about it. Um, it was important, it was just as important as soccer, hmm. football, you know, athletics. Um, going into middle school, it became very unimportant in a way, <laughs> you know, embarrassing even. As a young black boy in South Florida, to play the violin wasn't something that you did. So, yeah, so reflecting on that experience as a middle schooler, yeah. uh, think now, here you are at ASU, a place that's uh, committed to measuring ourselves by who we include. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And... You know, you're in a field that has historically been privileged sort of white European music. Correct. As first generation students of color come into the, our, our schools of music, want to make careers in music, where are we? What do we need to do to make that path more inviting? Uh, well, we all need to contribute. We really do all need to be contributors to either a classroom, community, world of ideas. We have come a long way, for sure, but we have a very long way to go. Um, and I think we need to enjoy the journey. We need to enjoy the path. Um, things have become um, fractured um, in a lot of ways, but th th there's a healthy amount of repair that can happen. I, th I think what, a lot, you know, the word that I'm thinking about is trust. You know, how much can our institutions really begin to trust um, artists, artists of color, um, and trust innovation yep. in collaboration and consort with tradition. Right. I always say tradition is nothing but an old innovation waiting patiently to be made new again. Yeah, right. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay, so tell us about, I mean, just so we get a sense of, uh, of the way you work. Mm. So, um, <laughs> Philadelphia Opera, yeah. uh, We Shall Not Be Moved. Mm. Ha this is a collaborative project. Could you just give us a sense of what, it, what, what the project was, what the story was that you were telling? Sure. How it unfolded, the innovation and experimentation? Sure. Um, any commission's an invitation. So I was invited in to write an opera for the Philadelphia, um, uh, for Philadelphia Opera, or opera, um, opera Company in Philadelphia, I think they've become now. And I was fortunate enough to have the great Mark Ramuti Joseph as a librettist and the great Bill T. Jones as the uh, dramaturg, choreographer, and director. And uh, Mark had the very important idea to, as, uh, as a story, to investigate what happened with the MOVE organization. And um, in Philadelphia, the MOVE incident is still something that is uh, painful and tragic and, uh, 
and an open wound for the community there. So what? So the, the yeah. So what was the incident? Um, well, John Africa started the Move organization. They all adopted the last name of Africa and uh, bought a home. Were part of the communities, part of the city block. Um, but as often is the case, they were uh, what we call a counterculture type of uh, uh, organization, and. Um, their neighbors decided uh, they didn't want them in the neighborhood anymore. Law enforcement became involved, and unfortunately, an incendiary device was um, detonated on the roof of, of their home, and a fire um, engulfed an entire city block, well over 100 homes, and six children uh, perished in, 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 in that fire. Mark's story picks up with uh, five young Philadelphia students today who have decided to not go to their school, but take up residence in, a, in an abandoned house, which turns out to be that house, and they start learning from the ghost of those children. I think for Mark and Bill and I, our operatic story was never going to be about rings and you know, unicorns. Right. It's fine, that's for someone else. I think for us, it was very important for the three of us to tell that particular story. And there are so many stories um, that really need to be told. You have this thing called DBR Lab. That's right. Uh, which I that. assume no one is ever sitting back in their chair. No. Everyone's always up on the edge of their chair, <laughs> metaphorically, in your, in your lab space. Yeah. So tell me about the lab. Tell me about sort of some of the projects the students are working on. What are you excited about? Well, the lab started as a challenge, actually a challenge from, from you. You know, what would be the best way for me to work here? Each uh, contributor, I don't use the word student, brings a project into the lab. And we talk about the project, we explore the project, I help to mentor the project by talking about the project, and we uh, present uh, a local presentation of the projects here in uh, Tempe, Phoenix, um, one semester, and then we bring it to New York City the following semester, having refined the project over the course of the year. And uh, DBR lab members are completely committed to this idea that art is transformative, art, is, is, uh, art making is, is vital. Uh, to the stability and strategic development of any community. I'd like to ask everybody uh, how they want to use their creativity to change the world. Oh, wow. Uh, you are using your creativity to change the world, but as you reflect on where you are now, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. how'd you, how would you answer that? The way I play the violin and the way I express myself has always been about telling stories. Yep. And now I just want to tell stories with the people that matter the most to me and um, hopefully do it in a way that empowers and, um, and expresses and enlightens and inspires the next generation of storytellers to come. Well, you are indeed doing that, <laughs> and uh, we hope that you will continue to do that for a long time here at ASU, um, mm -hmm. and uh, working with students and, and just uh, being the transformative musician that you are, always inspiring, always generous. Um, and thank you, for the, thank you for the walk. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thank you, man. All right.